this video, we are going to solve the question number 3A. Remember, we have been solving the exam question paper of uh, Imo State University here in Imo State, Owerri, 2019-2020 academic session, Chem 102, that is organic chemistry. We have solved question 1A, we have solved 1B, we have solved 2A, we have solved 2B, and we have solved 2C. Now we are on question number 3A. And the question number 3A says, define the following. Number I, carbonium ion. Number I, I, free radicals. Number I, 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 inductive effects. And number I, V, carbon ion. We are asked to define the following in organic chemistry. Let's start with the first one that says carbonium ion. A carbonium ion is an organic species that has a positively charged carbon atom. So when there is a positive charge on a carbon atom in an organic compound or species, that substance is called a carbonium ion. Let's take for instance, a molecule like this, CH3, CH2, CH3. If this carbon loses one of these hydrogens here, out of these three it loses one, and we have two left. Because of the fact that one of the H is missing, there will be a positive charge on this carbon. Now, the appearance of a positive charge on a carbon atom in an organic molecule makes the substance to be called a carbonium ion. Remember, a carbonium ion is an organic substance that has a positive charge on a carbon atom. Let's go to the second one, which says free radicals. Free radicals are those substances which are produced during homolytic bond breaking. When a chemical bond between two atoms is broken up homolytically, that means equally. Remember, every bond contains two electrons. Now, when this bond is broken, the two atoms involved in the bond, if they share the, those two electrons in that bond, equally. This one picks one, the other picks one of the electrons, they share it equally, such bond breaking is called homolytic bond breaking. Now, the substances produced during homolytic bond breaking are the ones we call free radicals. So in definition, we can say that free radicals are those reactive species formed during homolytic bond breaking which contain an unpaired electron. For instance, if I have chlorine molecule breaking up in the presence of ultraviolet light, you are going to have two chlorine radicals. This dot shows that this chlorine has one of the electrons, this one takes the other one. Remember that this chlorine molecule is in this form, Cl bond, Cl. The bond that holds the two atoms of chlorine together has two electrons on it. So when this bond is broken, each of the chlorines will go with one of the electrons because none of them is more electronegative than the other. This is chlorine, this is chlorine. They have equal electronegativity strength. Assuming this is hydrogen, and this is chlorine. You know that hydrogen is not electronegative. Chlorine is more electronegative. In that case, chlorine will collect the two electrons to itself, while hydrogen will go with nothing. Such a case is called heterolytic bond breaking, unequal sharing of electron. But well, in this case, we are looking at homolytic bond breaking, and homolytic bond breaking leads to the production of free radicals. We define again. Free radicals are those species or reactive species produced during homolytic bond breaking. And they have unpaired electrons, as you can see. The electrons are unpaired. They are very, very reactive. 
Now, the number three here says inductive effect. We should define inductive effect. Now, inductive effect is the pull of electron density towards a particular atom. Now, if I have something like HF, hydrogen fluoride, which we know that the bond is this way, HF. There is a bond between H and F, and this bond has two electrons. Because fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, fluorine will tend to pull these two electrons towards itself. So these two electrons are not actually at the center of the two atoms. Rather, the two electrons are located towards fluorine. Fluorine will draw these two electrons close to itself. This is the direction of movement of the electrons. And why is fluorine able to push these electrons towards itself? Because fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. Remember, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. So because these electrons are drawn towards fluorine, you know that gain of electron means negative. Fluorine is said to be partially negative. Why is it partial? Because the electrons have not been completely collected. It is in the process of being collected. Being collected. Now, fluorine becomes partially negative because it is taking the electrons. When you gain, you are negative. Why hydrogen becomes partially positive? Because it is losing the electrons. And when you lose electron, you are positive. But because hydrogen is losing, it is partially positive. Why fluorine is gaining is partially negative. And what causes inductive effect is due to high electronegativity difference between the two bonding atoms. Hydrogen has very low electronegative value, while fluorine has very high electronegative value. So it means that fluorine will attract the electrons more to itself, and this is what we have. Now, this attraction creates what we call polarity. The bond is polar. Why is the bond polar? Because the electrons are not equally shared. If the electrons are equally shared, they will be placed at the center. But you can see the electrons are pulled towards fluorine, making the bond polar. Now, this polarity created is what we call inductive effect. In summary, we can also say inductive effect is the phenomenon in which one of the bonding atoms in a bond system pulls the shared electrons towards itself. The electrons they are sharing is pulled towards one person, which is the one with more electronegativity power. The last one here says carbonion. A carbonion is an organic species that has a negatively charged carbon atom. It's just the opposite of carbonium. When an organic molecule has a positive charge on a carbon atom, the molecule or the substance is called carbonium ion. But when an organic substance has a negative charge on a carbon atom, that molecule or ion is called a carboanion. Remember, anion means negative, cation means positive. So another name for carbonium ion is carbocation. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to share this video with your friends and your cosmates. Invite them to learn with us in this channel. That is Catalyst 444 on YouTube. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.